Hey everyone, I want to make a video response to a video Charles put out recently in which he mentions he would really like to see in the future two plus full nodes uh, for Cardano. So obviously right now we have the Haskell for, full node, uh, but it'd be nice to have something else in the future like maybe JavaScript or, or Rust or maybe some other language. And in this video I want to talk about why I think Rust is a very viable option and why we're actually not that far um, to get that done. So first I want to take a very brief moment to explain why you'd want uh, two plus full nodes. So there's two main rationales. One is an engineering rationale and the other one is a philosophical rationale. So from an engineering perspective, it makes sense because often want, oftentimes um, different tooling makes sense for different use cases. So if you look at Ethereum, they have uh, different clients for different purposes. For example, we have the KEVM which was um, primarily funded by IHK in partnership with Runtime Verification. And that was used to easily formally verify Ethereum smart contracts. We have some implementations in JavaScript and in Go and C++ and so on. And so there's many different implementations um, and people use different implementations for different purposes. For example, for an enterprise use case or for e easy prototype in the browser or for full verification. And so people use different um, components uh, for different cases. So it makes sense that Cardano uh, could also have this in the future where you know the Haskell code base is really nice for running your state pool and making sure everything is uh, exactly within the spec. Uh, but the rest implementation is easy to use to build tooling like Yodoi or to build browser-based tooling or smart contracts and so on. So the second one is from a philosoph philosophical perspective, right? Are we really centralized if we only have one full node and it, it's, it's in Haskell? Now, the good thing about Cardano is that we have an update proposal mechanism. And so we won't be kind of locked where IHK is the only one updating code uh, because anybody can propose a fork. Anybody can uh, open the code's all open source and we can look at the code, make a change to the code, and send an update proposal. So we're never going to be locked in uh, the way that other blockchains might get. But if you look at Bitcoin, it's pretty bad that um, the the core node is is like uh, the, the node. There's no specifications people refer to and people are mostly locked to using um, this software. So we want to get into a more decentralized ecosystem where uh, we have different implementations, people use whichever one they want, and they're all you know, considered valid and you can use any of them you want. So why do I think Rust is, is a good option? Well, actually, if you think about what you need for uh, a full node, you need a few different things, right? You need some sort of networking, right? You need some sort of um, serialization, right? How do you represent transactions on chain? Um, how do you represent metadata on chain? How do you represent blocks on chain, right? So you need to have some sort of serialization. You need to have a certain set of utility function. For example, um, you know, how do you calculate a transaction fee? How do you create a wallet from a private key? Uh, and so on. So you need to have a certain set of utility functions. And then you also need some cryptography, right? So what keys you need to sign what? Now, if you think about it for Cardano, we already have a lot of the cryptography in Rust already, thanks to Jormungandr, right? So for Jormungandr, we already wrote a lot of the cryptography we needed, not 100% what we need for Haskell Shelley, um, but a lot of it. And in Emergo, we actually wrote a project called Cardano Serialization lib. And this project is actually super important because it gives us uh, these two things, the serialization function and then the utility function for a wallet. So if you're wondering more about what this library is and exactly how it works, um, I'm going to go into a bit of a tangent here to explain because I think it's super important to understand uh, whether or not a Rust code is possible and how far we are from there. So if you want to represent uh, a blockchain on your hard drive, Right, you have to figure out how do you store the data. And so some of the popular um, file formats are something like JSON, which is very easy to read for humans, but very inefficient to store on a hard drive. Um, there's a different format called CBOR, which is meant to be harder for humans to read, but much more space efficient for a hard drive. And so Cardano uses CBOR to specify how transactions are stored, how blocks are stored, and so on. And at Emergo, we wanted to write a uh, Rust library for Yodoi because Yodoi runs in the browser and it's hard to get uh, Haskell running the browser. 
So we said, okay, so we need to get somehow transaction creation, signing, everything working in the browser. So what we did is uh, we looked into how do you represent CBOR, right? How do programmers actually use this? And there's a tool called CDDL, which is a language for describing how a CBOR format works. So you might see like a coin is an integer and a transaction is, you know, so on. So kind of like a human readable format that describes exactly how, uh, you know, what is included in your uh, serialization and how it's, how it's made. Is it a number, a string, a text, and so on, right? So this is a, a tool called CDL that allows you to do this. Now, Cardano uses CDL to specify all the on-chain format. So it uses it for, you know, how to represent transactions, how to represent blocks, and also uses it for its, its networking la layer. So whenever you send stuff over the network, they have CDL documents to describe how do you send stuff over the network and what file format and so on. And so what we did is we wrote a Rust library that takes CDL as input and generates a Rust library. And from this library, you can compile it to WebAssembly and then run it from JavaScript. And that's how we power Yodoi. So because we, we've already written this library, it means that inside Yodoi, we already have a serialization for transaction formats and so on, uh, but we haven't run it on the networking code. So um, I like to put a check mark here, but it's kind of like a maybe. The reason why is because there's still a lot of open problems we have to solve for our code base, our CDL code gen uh, project. And there's also some open issues in our serialization lib, some things we just haven't had time to do. And the reason we just haven't had time to do it is because our goal was to get Yeroi working and we've done that, right? Uh, but beyond that, there's still some more stuff you need to get to if you want to have a full node. And we can't do this by ourselves because Emergo is not funded to build a full node in Rust, right? In fact, Emergo is not even funded for uh, building Yeroi, right? That's not what we're supposed to do. We fund Yeroi because we want to contribute back to the ecosystem because we think it's worth investing in and we think there's a, a return on uh, you know, building out the ecosystem and, and the wallet ecosystem for the, for the uh, project. But um, Emergo was, was not in the initial agreement supposed to build something like Yeroi. So we're building at a loss for, for everybody uh, to use. Similarly, for this Cardano serialization lib, you know, we built this whole um, library and this pipeline for taking the, for the binary specification for Cardano and converting it to Rust code. Uh, but we're not really meant to do this. This is something that we want to do to give back to the community. Um, and so if people want to get involved and help us build this RESTful node, uh, you can definitely check out all our code. It's all open on GitHub. And I, I've put tickets on there. You can see what features are missing and how you can add stuff. Uh, but the kind of summary, if, if you didn't understand exactly what's going on that tangent, the summary is that we already have a lot of the serialization stuff done. And the networking, range, uh, networking layer is kind of in striking distance, right? Because it's possible that we use our existing code gen stuff to get a lot of the networking layer done. Now, obviously, um, just having those things will not give you a complete full node. Uh, but I think what makes sense to aim as a kind of V1 is kind of a read only, or maybe an audit only node in Rust. So what does that mean exactly? So right now, whenever you start a full node in Cardano, the first thing you do is, you know, P2P, peer selection, and so on, right? You have to find other nodes in the network to connect to, and they will send you the blockchain and you verify it locally and then store it locally. Now, building this peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure and the peer selection, it's, it's non-trivial, especially because Cardano has its own custom implementation of a networking layer uh, that's custom made for blockchains, for the Cardano network, for our use case. Um, so we don't have an existing implementation implementation in Rust, and it'd be non-trivial cost to build one. Well, what would make sense is if we have a Haskell code base, the existing Haskell node, and this Haskell node is in charge of connecting to other peers, fetching information, and then it passes all that information to the Rust node. And this Rust node would be audit only. So take this information, look at it and say, yep, that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. And um, it would have all the code to verify that everything is correct. And that's super important because if we have the code to verify everything is correct, 
it means that we have all the code we need to build any tooling on top of it. We're going to build any, any browser ecosystem or any tooling or you know plugins for developers. We would have all that that we can have in Rust and compile to WebAssembly and run that on, on many different platforms on the web, or we can compile it to native code and have that run on you know raw pies and so on. And it would be qu quite a good first step. Now, um, obviously, this would require community input and community work. We can't just do this alone at Emergo, as I mentioned. We can't do this alone at IHK. Um, we need this to be a kind of community issue. Do people want a Rust full node? And I think the answer is yes. And the reason why is because the library we create at Emergo is actually already being used, not just by us at Emergo, but it's actually also being used by exchanges, other wallets, oops, other wallets. And we ha we've had some services also, you know, uh, other products that use the integrate Cardano just generically also reach out to us and say, hey, we're using your library. We have questions about this um, and so on. So clearly there's there is an interest in a Rust node. And I feel like if we just continue building it out and add more functionality, uh, it's not unreasonable that we have more exchanges, more wallets, more other companies investing into this tooling and help build it out, right? So if, as you remember earlier, I mentioned Ethereum. If you look at who's funding Ethereum uh, full nodes, it's not just the Ethereum Foundation. Obviously they give some money, but you know, some en large enterprise companies, you know, fund the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, other companies like IHK, smaller companies also fund stuff like KVM. Uh, and we have, you know, kind of different companies coming in and say, well, I need this for my use case. So I'm going to put, you know, some money into it to help fund development. So I feel like we have already a really good start because, um, so IHK wrote all the specifications. So we have you know a clear place to start with. We have easy documents you can read to figure out exactly what the binary specification is, figure out exactly how it works. And Emergo wrote a library that already takes these and generates a lot of the Rust code you need from them. So now we need you know people. Obviously, we can contain this at Emergo if people are interested and want to help fund this. Uh, but obviously, if anybody from the community wants to come and contribute, we can have different company come in and, and help build this out. I feel like we would get re something really special uh, within not that long amount of time. So this is kind of a call to action. So I've had a lot of people reach out to me in the past, like two or three weeks saying like, Hey, I'd love to have Cardano in Go. I'd love to have Cardano in, you know, X, Y, or Z, Java or C sharp and any language. And, and obviously all these people want these languages because, because they're building tooling that uses this. Uh, but I feel like instead of building kind of scatter of different SDKs in different languages, it would be really nice if we had uh, all these people say, okay, well, it'd be nice to build a second implementation of Cardano. And right now we already have a lot of stuff in Rust. We have expertise in Rust at Emergo. We have expertise in Rust at IOHK. We already have a lot of tooling. What if we just got together and started working on this as a passion project and see how far we can get? And I think that'd be pretty cool. So if you're interested in this, definitely reach out to me. I'll put a link to the GitHub pages and the description of this video. And let's see if we can get something started.